Okay, so the syntax is up here. You have the keyword for, followed by a variable, the keyword in a container. Okay, this container here is, um, is sometimes referred to as an iterable container. Okay, that means something that can be counted or you can loop through that, con that content. So an example of container in this case would be a string. Okay, so strings are uh, containers because you can count each individual character in the string, right? When we learn lists and dictionaries and uh, so on, then you will also see that those are also containers. But for now, we're just gonna uh, look at two things, two types of containers. One is a string and the other is what's called a range. Down here is another diagram to show you what that one of those container is. It's called a range. A range is a special function in Python that is very useful as well, that you can uh, return a, a range of numbers, only numbers, okay, integer numbers, from a starting point to the a stopping point or number. And also it gives you a, um, a step value. It's an incremental or decremental value. Okay, so let's take a look at the for loop. And then I'll, look, I'll show you also the range, what that looks like in the code and what they mean. Okay, so let's go over to the help menu over here. And let's type in search for uh, range. You're gonna see this help menu here and you need to understand what's going on here first. So the range function, uh, inside the range function, as you can see, this is the function, this part right here. Inside the function, there are three parameters. We have a stopping, the first number or the first argument is the stop, the start, I'm sorry. Then the middle is the stop. And then you have a third one here is called the step. As you can see, it puts a, there's a square bracket around it. So this is just a syntax, a notation telling you that this is optional. I mean, you don't have to include it. And then the start is also kind of, uh, you know, optional, but you can also change the start value to something else besides zero. Okay. If you don't include the start value, then it will default to zero, okay, by default always. And that's why you see up here, there's a range followed by the stop value only. It ignores the start and the step. Okay, so the step is defaulted to one, a positive one. And then the start is defaulted at zero. And then the stop is the, uh, the stopper, right? If you remember the while loop, it's like that um, signal value when to stop. Okay, so that is the range. Uh, so if, for example, if I go down to the terminal and I type in the function range, if I pass into this function, let's say five, okay, so if I only include one number in here, one value, this value here will automatically be set to the stop value. As you can see here, this is a default. If one value, then the stop is the value, and then the start number will, again, is zero. So if I hit enter, you will see that it, the range is from zero to five. Okay, it does not show the step. The step is, uh, it, it's done implicitly behind the scene. It's gonna be a, a step of one. So it's a counter. You count from this number zero inclusive all the way to five. And this number here is not inclusive. Okay, it's exclusive and the stopping value. So in this case, if you were to count, the step is one. So it'll be zero, one, two, three, four, and then you're done, right? Okay. So that is the uh, default range. So if I do again, a range to a you know, thousand, same thing, zero to a thousand. So to like nine, 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 okay. If you want to include that starting point, because sometimes maybe you don't want to start from zero, you want to start from 10. So you would do range. I want to start from 10, 10 to what? 10 to 100. So you can see that on the range number is now, it's overwritten uh, the, yeah, the start value has been overwritten to 10. So you start from 10 instead of zero. Okay, so sometimes that's important. And uh, so again, it doesn't show the step. If you want to say, okay, I want to increment these count by two, then you have to explicitly include that in the range. 
So you would do like range from 10 to 100 um, and print every you know, other number, right? So you're skipping two numbers. In this case, I'm printing 10, 12, 14, 16, right? And then once I reach, there's a, there's a counter that's going on behind the scene, which you don't see. This counter will, will increment as you use the full loop you'll see in a minute. Once you reach the number 100, if once it exceeds that, or reach that point, then it's no longer true, it, it will stop. To go the other direction, you can also go negative by setting this third variable to a negative value. So if you want to do that, you have to explicitly do that as well. So if you want to count from 10 down to a zero and go into negative direction by two, okay? So you count 10 first because you are starting here. So if you, if you are reversing the direction, just make sure that the starting value is larger than the stopping value. As long as the starting value is greater than V0, because I'm going negative direction, then it will run. Okay, so you can go positive or negative direction. Just make sure you swap the two numbers here. So that is pretty much the range. And the range is, is important because it's, it's a really important part of the for loop. So let's go over here and uh, write our for loop. So the four, followed by a variable name, okay? So if you wanna print a number like we did before with the while loop from, you know, a one to 10, so you would do something like from a number, any number, n, just a variable name, and the range from zero to 10, right? And the step is again, a, a plus one. So, Remember that 10 is not inclusive. So in this case, I'm gonna print only from zero to nine. If I print the n value, you're gonna see that it's gonna print zero to nine only. As you see over here. Okay, this is zero to nine, because 10 is not inclusive. If you want to include 10, then you have to put 11 here. So now I print from one to um, zero to 10. So just remember that this is not inclusive, the stopping value. Even if you go the other direction, if you wanna go the negative direction, then the third variable over here has to be a minus one, if I counting one at a time from, right, from what to what. In this case, I'm not gonna get anything because it's already false because the from value is already larger than this, I mean, smaller than the stop values, therefore it's gonna be false. If you see that if I print and run, it's not gonna show anything in my console. Okay, nothing gets printed. That's why it must be carefully uh, uh, designed. So let's say from 10 down to zero, if you wanna include zero, then you wanna go to a minus one, right? Because again, it's not inclusive. So now I'm gonna go 10, nine, eight, seven, six, all the way down to zero. Okay, so the negative direction. So this n here, okay, stores the, in this case, stores the counter from the starting value. So whatever the starting value is, initially n will store the value first, and after that, it runs to one, the body one time. However, statements you have in here runs one time, and then after that, it's going to check this increment. This is the update. It updates the counter by a minus one. So initially it was 10, so now n is now nine. And if it's nine, then it, it, it's gonna compare that value against the stopping value. Is it greater uh, than, than one? If it is, then yes, keep going until this is no longer true. Okay, so that's happening behind the scene. Uh, um, which is why you saw earlier that initially when I put a zero here, it didn't work. But something more meaningful is, for example, if you want to print, um, say that the first three characters of a word, and the word is going to be, let's say Python, this three here. So what you do is n starts at zero because we didn't input it, we didn't include it, so it's zero. So instead of printing zero, I'm going to say, I want the word, then the square bracket of n, right? The position n is zero first. So this is the zeroth position. It's gonna print the letter P 
and then I'm going to increment by one, then the y, and then the t, and then at the point we, we stop. So again, just print three letters. And then you see here we have, we have the letters p, y, t. Okay, so notice that I'm using n as the index of this word to get those uh, letters out, right? So use it for this scenario. If you want to get, you know, just the um, every other character starting with P, how would you do that? You can just go over here and change the range. I'm going to start from zero position, stop at, um, I can go all the way to, let's say the, the, the size of this word, how many characters it has. Well, I don't know. You can know by using the function called len, right? The length of the word that gives you the total characters in this word, how many there are, it will give you that. So in this case, it's gonna be six. And then I'm gonna step through uh, two. So it will print every other characters, right? So P, T, O, and then I'm done, right? P, T, O. So you can see how easy this is in Python.